It's good footage. This works pretty well this way. Not doing the pull in the back, we don't have to build it up as much now. This cottonwood or whatever it is makes me nervous at the way it's leaning. It's way leaning over, so. I think so. Yeah, I think it's good. Hiding behind one of the buildings. So I like that. Make me work, make me sweat inside. Make me feel like I'm alive. Take this hurt, lady, throw it in my face. Don't let these bones slow you down. Cause I'm coming up strong. Crash it a little greener. I need a true belief. Hey guys, my name is Justin Briscoe. If you're new to this channel and you're enjoying what you're seeing in this episode, please hit the subscribe button and then also hit the like button. If you wanna get updated when these episodes come out, you can also hit the notification button. And then if you got any questions or anything, leave some comments down below and I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Today, we're here at what we used to call our 40 acres. It's our 40 acre track that we originally purchased a little over a year and a half ago. We have since picked up like an additional 14, 15 acres that's pretty much connected to the property. We can get to it with like four wheelers and tractors and stuff. And then um, we're in the process of picking up a couple more acres that's got a, an older house on it. So we still catch ourselves calling it the, the back 40 or the 40 acres just because that's how we, we started um, as far as what we started calling it originally. We purchased this property and realized that we wanted to make it our, our primary residence. We've, we've always flipped our house every two years and we've been looking for the right property to kind of settle down on and build what, what we're calling our dream home. The, the house that we want to raise our kids in and keep for a long time and not keep flipping every two years. So 40 acres is a lot to maintain. There's a lot of property taxes. When you get into building stuff, there's lots of insurance and maintenance, just a lot of expenses. And we're gonna build a pretty good size home. I mean, we'll go over the details here in a little bit. I mean, it's not gonna be like a mansion or anything, but it's it's gonna be pretty expensive to build. So we are gonna have a, a decent size mortgage. I just want to justify having that mortgage with the property really kind of paying for itself. And that's where we started, I, I guess about eight months ago, December, of 2020 with the construction of the tiny home community, which you guys can check down below in the link with um, a lot of our episodes that we've done up to this point. We're getting really close to getting done with that and we're gonna put it up on Airbnb and based off our other Airbnb properties, I believe it's gonna cash flow very well. And that's gonna kind of help pay for the property as far as the taxes and insurance and maintenance and mortgages and all that good stuff. And that's why we're doing this video now because we're not starting the construction side of our place, but we're kind of starting the planning side with getting all our plans done and getting budgets put together and talking to different vendors and stuff. We're going to do a few extra things on this house versus what we would normally do in a, a normal construction. So that was what we had to get done first was get the tiny home community built so we could cash flow and kind of get started on this. So that's a little bit of background on our back 40 property. And our, you guys definitely check out some of our previous episodes we've done on our Briscoe Homes channel and let us know what you think. So as far as the plans, we've kind of started our plans on the main house. As you can tell, I mean, we've, we've got a pretty big um, roof line. The total roof line is, I think it's, it's 80 foot this way and then it's 70 foot um, from front to back. So 70 by 80, I mean, we're gonna be, I mean, over 5,500 square foot under roof. Now, you have to understand that's a huge wrap around porch that goes around the whole place. So the footprint of what's actually heating and cooled on the inside is only gonna be 2,400 square foot. I say only, I mean, 2,400 square foot is a lot. Don't, don't get me wrong. Originally, we were going to do the main master suite and then we're gonna have like some lofts up above. It was gonna be one bedroom down below and then there's gonna be like four kind of open concept lofts up top for the kids and then we're gonna do of course our master suite have a bathroom and then have a guest bath uh, we changed that a little bit we went ahead and decided to add like some jack and jill baths up in the loft for the the kids because um, the boys will be on on one side of the house so they'll have their own bathroom they share and then madeline our girl will be on the other side in the loft and then we'll have just an extra bedroom there for um, for when guests come over for them to keep their toys and, and different things and having them up there we decided to go ahead and add some bathrooms and so they're each gonna have a bathroom on their side so it's really gonna turn it I guess it's it's gonna almost be like a five bedroom and then that's gonna become a four bath inside the structure so we're, we're only 2400 square foot on the footprint and then with the lofts it's gonna put us close to 3600 square foot but they're not they're not even really bedrooms they're just going to be like i said very open concept the walls on the outside of the porch are going to be 12 foot and it's going to go all the way up to a peak it's going to be probably about 32 foot no attic space it's just going to be completely wide open um, we're calling it a barnuminium but really the only thing it's a barnuminium in it is as far as the the metal structure itself goes we're going with metal so we don't have to mess with any interior walls that are load bearing or big lvls anything like that we just want when you walk in just see 
this huge wide open space and when you walk in you can see on the plans we've got our kitchen in the front living room in the back and it's just going to be just a huge wide open area that goes all the way up 30 32 foot to the top even though it's 2400 square foot footprint it's going to seem much bigger when you walk in so that's going to be our main house uh, the house will set here and then we're going to have a detached garage just to the north of it and they'll probably be about 25 30 foot apart from each other and we've never had a pool but we've always wanted to do a pool and with this being a house that we're going to be at for a long time i think we're going to go ahead and do a pool so that'll be kind of in between the house and the the um the garage and we're calling it the garage. It's really like a garage slash shop slash, it's gonna have a lot of different uses. We're gonna um, put a little kitchenette in there and a little bathroom and it almost be like a pool house in itself. So when we have people over, we can kind of hang out in the, in the barn and have the pool right there. The only plans that I have right now are of the main house. We are doing an all metal structure, but as far as the walls, we're gonna do all lumber. We're really gonna get into some cool building science on this place that I've wanted to do in the past, but financially didn't make sense. If it was just gonna be a house we're gonna be in for two years, there's a lot of money you can spend on the building science side of things that are gonna make the house very, very energy efficient. But if your end seller doesn't understand those things, they're not gonna appreciate and pay the premium that it should bring. This being our primary home, with us being here for a long time, we want to we want to meet passive home standards. You guys can look at the link down below to see what a actual passive house is. But pretty much a passive house is just something that is ran off very, very limited amount of energy and can pretty much be self-reliant if you put a little bit of solar panels on there. Um, you could be potentially off the grid. Building science part of things, I mean, we're going to build, be building some cool um, double wall, double two by four wall. They're going to be almost 12 inches apart. And so we're gonna have a complete open gap in between that we can run all our plumbing, all our electric, and we don't have to cut into the two buys. And then we can do almost 12 inches of insulation. So our value on the wall, is gonna surpass an R50, which is insane. I mean, there's people that don't even do R50 in their attic. So our wall is gonna be R50. And these walls, even though they're two by fours and they're double walled, they're not even load bearing. They're just the exterior wall that goes completely around. Uh, the metal structure itself is gonna be almost like a like a big raincoat or like a big jacket. It's just gonna be this huge roof. And then we're gonna kind of build the, the structure, the 60 by 40, 2,400 square foot structure inside that. The HVAC system, we're gonna to try to get away with some mini splits and use some very high sear units. That's gonna give us a lot of energy efficient. So the other cool thing about this house with us being here for a while, we're wanting to make some investments up front on some of the infrastructure that long-term will save us money and some of those items are gonna allow for us to be completely off the grid, the capability of being off the grid. Originally, we are gonna drill a well, and that was gonna cost us 25, 30 grand with how deep we have to drill here. And I'm all for a well, I think it's a really good idea, but um, I've always been into rain harvesting, and so we're just gonna have a ton of metal roofs that's gonna uh, catch a lot of rain. So we're gonna put that into a rain harvest tank. Um, I'm looking at some probably 30,000 gallon to maybe all the way up to 40,000 gallon um, rain harvest tanks. So we'll put a pump on it, bring it back into the house, and of course we'll filtrate that. I don't think we have to do reverse osmosis, but we'll do like an ultraviolet um, filtration and we'll have some different filters in there to clean that water. So we will have access to co-op water coming into the house, but we're gonna try to com live completely off the rain harvest. The other thing we're wanting to do is solar panels. I've had solar panels before on another house. Of course, it wasn't a great investment because it was a house that we had for two years and the end product just, it, it sold for a little bit more than probably what it would have without solar. But if it's just a house you're gonna be in in two years in this area, I didn't see the benefit of adding it. I mean, we probably broke even once it was all said and done. With this being a house we're gonna be in for a long time, I want to put a large solar array on my roof and I wanna be able to have battery backup. It is going to be tied to the grid, but it's gonna have off-grid capabilities. And so um, if we see some storms like we did earlier in the year to where electricity was out for some people, whatever, three, four, um, a week at a time, um, we'll have the solar panels that will collect our energy and go into our battery bank. And yeah, there's things that affect that. People are gonna say solar's not the, the way to go and you get snow on and you can't catch the sun. And then I get it, but long-term majority of the year, that's gonna supply the electricity that's needed. So, and then of course for sewer, we're gonna have our, our septic system, which everyone does outside city limits if you don't have access to city sewage. So yeah, we'll have off-grid capabilities between the, the rain harvest, the solar panels, and then the, the septic system. Um, we'll be completely off the grid, which I think is really cool. Although we'll still be tied to co-op water, we'll still be tied to Encore Electric, but we will have those off-grid capabilities. So that's something I've wanted to do for a long time and I'm really excited to be able to dive into that and talk with all the different vendors and implement this on a house that it's gonna be worth the investment because we're gonna be here for the next 20, 30, 40 years, however long. This is 
a house that we're planning on raising our kids in and staying here for the rest of our lives. So we're going to make that initial investment and let it pay off over the next whatever the return on investment is. So guys, a big, big question is going to be what, what is the budget? How much do you plan on spending on that? And honestly, with this being episode one and just starting the planning part of it, I really don't know. I mean, if you'd asked me a year ago, I, I had an idea of what the structure, the main house is gonna cost me, but things have completely changed. I mean, there's certain materials that are hard to get right now. Lumber um, had skyrocketed. Yes, we're seeing it start starting to go down, and that's one of the reasons why we're, we're waiting. Right now, we want uh, material to continue to come down, but we'll, we'll get into budget in a few more of the episodes but just to kind of ballpark a few items that are outside normal expenses. I mean, the rain harvest, I'm getting quotes for around 30,000 on it. I mean, it, it could push 40,000. Um, solar panel system, the, the size that I'm wanting to do, I want to oversize it for our actual actual usage. So that might be a $40,000 system. Of course, there'll be federal rebates and then Encore also has their own rebate. So that'll bring the cost down. The metal building itself, I, I think I was quoted on it for over 60 grand originally, but no telling what that is now. I mean, it, it could be pushing 100. Like I said, I don't want to get into a lot of numbers because things have completely changed from what they were a year ago. When we, we weren't ready to build a year ago, but I was just kind of running the cost and seeing what it, what it would actually cost. We will get into the budget in future episodes and talk about that a little bit more when we have a better idea. So I kind of touched on the time frame. It's, it's definitely something that we wanted to make sure we got the tiny home community finished first so we could get that on Airbnb and have that income coming in so that we can pay for all our expenses. We really didn't know when we would start, but the fact that we're getting close to being done with the tiny home community and with materials starting to come down also, um, of course, interest rates are at an all-time low. We're kind of shooting for the planning stage right now for the next four or five months of just getting our budgets together and getting our financing and all that good stuff lined up. And I honestly would like to start beginning of 2022. As far as the time frame, I mean, things are difficult right now, just getting certain things. I'm just gonna say 12 months because this is a custom build. In my mind, I'd, I'd like to finish within six to nine months, but I'm just gonna say 12 months so we're not stressed out and trying to get, in, get, trying to get it done by a certain time. And then the ultimate goal of having this whole property, I mean, of course, I want to have a place for our family to um, be able to grow up and our kids running around outside riding four wheelers and hunting and just doing all the stuff that kids should be doing and not getting being stuck in their room watching TV and playing video games. So that's a huge goal of getting out here on some property. Um, we do want to start, make this our homestead and start a farm. We want to raise cattle and race chickens and just have the, the true off-grid capability. I mean, we're gonna have infrastructure-wise, we're gonna be off the grid and it'd be cool if we have the capability of um, supporting ourselves, growing our own food and our own gardens and vegetables and livestock. So between that and then having the tiny home community kind of helping pay for the whole property and cash flowing and um, if any of our family ever wants to come in and visit us, they'll have a place to stay um, here on our, our 40 acre track. So that's kind of the, the ultimate goal, is just to have a cool place for the family to grow up at and just have all the off-grid capabilities and just be able to be potentially self-sufficient if, if we really wanted to, to do that. So you guys let me know what you think. Leave some comments down below. If you've not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, go check out some of our videos. Check out our tiny home community and some of the other stuff that we've done within the real estate business. And you guys let me know what you think. And until next time, Peace.